So it's another day with the Project Celica here. And I'm gonna go ahead and work on the AC condenser area. Um, if you guys remember on previous videos, I was saying that I was gonna replace the whole AC system on the vehicle and upgrade it. Um, I already got the upgraded compressor right there, 10 piston design. And um, I removed the old AC condenser right here. So I decided to go ahead and spray a little bit of black um, paint right here because it had a lot of overspray of the of the white of the blue right here you can see all that's overspray from the the blue of the car the guy told me he went to mako and got the car repainted and it honestly looks like trash there's no clear coat to it or if it, there is and it's very very dull so as i said i'm getting the car repainted professionally um gonna make it really nice setup um but since I know most Toyotas have right here this area painted black, um, I didn't want to spray paint spray paint it white because I felt like a lot of white's too too ugly. I don't know, so I just decided to paint it black because that's the original color, black. So um, we didn't really have nothing to use, so I just ended up using some duplicate color um, BTY fifteen sixty six black. It's basically Toyota's um, black. And I removed the old AC condenser, so I bought a new one from Parts Geek, which is right here. Gonna go ahead and install the old brackets from the old one and mount it up. Denso, first time fit. So that's the part number made in Japan. Obviously, it's quality. Um, the only reason I'm going Denso is because I know it's not gonna fail on me and it's gonna last a very long time. And I mean, you could go to the cheap route and get any other cheap condenser you see on eBay, but I wanna do this right. So Denso it is, it was kind of expensive. It was like about 140 shipped, but it is what it is. So this morning's run to the junkyard was kind of pointless because <laughs> I didn't realize, but the new AC condenser actually has brand new brackets, yo brand spanking new though i'm very stoked about that so went to the junkyard early this morning to to get these but i guess i'm not going to be using them since i already got new ones you know it's quality when they hold down the damn ac condenser with a strap though <laughs> this is legit quality people like this is quality quality at its finest <laughs> can't stress that enough but Today's visit to the junkyard wasn't all of a waste. Um, I did end up getting the, the reservoir, um, power steering reservoir bracket. We ended up losing it somewhere in Irvin's um, house right here, garage. And I also got another battery tie down so we could put the battery for good now. So it wasn't really that much of a waste to the junkyard, but that's just cool though. I'm glad that we got the new brackets. So let's go ahead and install that. So we got the power steering reservoir situated. Um, I am using a hose from a 97 ES300. Lexus, and I went ahead and I used a clamp from Home Depot. Let's see if I can get a good picture. No, I'm not going to get a good angle, but you can see it's just a clamp. It's, um, it's basically one of these clamps. Um, where is the box at? Oh, so it's one of these, but because the kit from Harbor Freight doesn't have the, the big size, I went to, I went to Home Depot and I got a one inch one and it fits perfectly fine. And... Another thing I did is I got a coupler, a coupler, and I just got a, the spare hose from a 7th Gen Celica, just so I could do the curve, and this is what we temporarily have. But the idea is I'm gonna go grab a 7th Gen hose and we're gonna see if we can eliminate this hump right here and just make it go straight like that. So I'm gonna go to AutoZone right now and see what I can do, but just to give you guys a general idea as to what I did. So, you guys already know, <laughs> I buy the best for the vehicle. We got Mishimoto radiator. And here's the part number if you guys need it. But this thing's awesome. 
this thing's awesome it's that's quality so i'm gonna mount it up into the silica and see if i could get the hoses the cooling hoses because um so on the forums or online apparently this one you would use um i have the part number for it it's actually right here But anyways, let's get it mounted. Um, don't forget to put your rubber insulators or whatever they're called, dampeners. <laughs> so we're gonna hook up the lower radiator hose and I ended up buying two more of these Deco hoses, 72126. It's the same one I'm using for the top radiator hose. And the idea that I'm going for right here is because the exit for the lower radiator is on the left side of the vehicle and then this is on the right side, I kind of figured I was going to do like a L shape. Basically get two of these L cut and this one up here L and then cut. And to connect both of them, I would be using this JEGS um, coupler. I'll go ahead and put a picture of the part where I got it from. Obviously JEGS, but the part number. And the idea is to use this like that to have a sharp bend. So I already marked it right here. I'm gonna go ahead and do my cut. And hopefully it's good because these hoses are like 20 ish dollars it's a little bit cheaper on rock auto but i kind of want these now and it's not so much of an issue to pay a little bit extra so i did my first cut right here to kind of shorten this distance for up here so that it doesn't rub up against the fans so i already cut it to length you can see how it's formed basically a huge arrow with these pointing at the correct direction and i ended up using oem clamps these are off the es 300 i was at i was picking stuff off at pick and pull and here's the part number for the jegs coupler one and a quarter inch and the oem clamps seem to be doing their job so I'm just gonna leave those and our, I'm gonna put it back into the 1MZ and the Mishimoto radiator. Okay, I think that's enough practice with that. So I already have the whole cooling routed and I believe, well, not really all the way. I still need to do the coolant reservoir. Uh, we'll take care of that right now or maybe in another episode. But for now, I already have the top radiator hose. So this is the Deco hose that I showed you guys. This is an unmodified one. I grabbed the hose clamps from that Lexus ES300 and I these two are the ones that I modified. I already showed you guys down here. So I already have the angle right here. Pretty sure this is going to do the job really well. Um, we're probably gonna build a bracket for it just so we could be on the safe side since the engine will move back and forth whenever I do a pull. But, that should give you an idea because I I was looking on the forum and on the pages online and I couldn't find nothing about this lower radiator hose. And I was reading that you pretty much got to customize something or make something up. And this is my creation right here. So it's two Deco hoses, same ones. I just cut them to length. Oh, and if you're going to be reusing the stock um, Celica fans, you have to bend this plate a little bit so that you can get the clamp to go over the hose. So you can see I, I bend it a little bit, but it's all good. You know, it's out of the way from the exhaust manifold right there. It's out of the way, which is a good thing because we didn't want it just coming down like, like that because it would get in the way of the exhaust manifold and it's out of the way. Um, in the future, I will upgrade the fans to a Mishimoto style, um, make it a little bit thinner, slimmer, I guess. But for now, we're going to run these since the Mishimoto fans are $60 and I would need to buy two. So that's $120 and 
yeah, I'll do that on a later date, but we're gonna hook up the coolant temp sensor. I believe it goes right here. Don't wanna forget that, but plumbing is complete. Plumbing is complete. Cool. So I was gonna end up running the 97 Camry um, coolant reservoir. And this would be like an idea of where we kind of want to locate it, something like that. Maybe put one of those rivet threads right here and just set it there and build a little custom bracket down here so it could sit well. But should give you a general idea. And then on the Mishimoto, we would just plug it up right here. And for the coolant right here for the throttle body we would just run a hose from here to the throttle body which is really simple um but we'll leave this for another day um it's starting to get dark already so i think we're gonna call it a day soon and still gotta figure out this power steering hose but for now it's gonna stay like that should be fine but i already told you guys what i wanted to do basically run a straight hose from like that to avoid this hump right here but we'll figure something out and I'll let you guys know on a future episode. So in order to save somewhat of money hourly from the exhaust shop, because I know some of them charge by the hour, I decided to buy a Harbor Freight welder. Um, they had it on sale. You could probably get it like a little bit cheaper when they have it on sale, but it's the titanium. Um, here, I'll turn the camera around. but bought a little welder and what the plan is we're going to start um building our exhaust and we're just going to tack and then we're going to take it to the muffler shop to have it welded up together and go from there but i feel like that's going to be cheaper and that way we know it works i did get like about two of you guys asking for routing um diagrams for the for the vacuum lines on the supercharged setup. Um, we have the PCB right there, and I have this long line because I plan to do a catch can later on um, to prevent buildup on the, under the valve cover. But So PCB, long travel, and then it goes to this one in the back right here. So that's one of them. I'm gonna be running a longer hose as well to do another catch can because I don't wanna get these to build up a lot of sludge underneath but it's a long one and that one just basically goes back into the intake right here so that's gonna be a future episode that's not gonna be for now this is after i get it barred 